Good afternoon, and welcome to another enthralling episode of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your enlightening and enigmatic host, Voice of Doom! I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, and in his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. He rose again from the dead three days later, and is, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Apostles' Creed. I still remember it from when I was a kid. What else do I remember? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a pretty famous passage. And before I begin my lecture, I'll read you a passage from Nichiren from one of his most famous writings, which explains the meaning of life basically in two pages. Life at each moment encompasses both body and spirit and both self and environment of all sentient beings in every condition of life, as well as in sentient beings, plant sky and earth on down to the most minute particles of dust. Life at each moment permeates the universe and is revealed in all phenomena. One awakened to this truth himself embodies this relationship. However, even though you chant and believe in Myoho Renge Kyo, if you think the law is outside yourself, you are embracing not the mystic law, but some inferior teaching. Inferior teaching means those other than this sutra, which are all provisional and transient. No provisional teaching leads directly to enlightenment, and without the direct path to enlightenment, you cannot attain Buddhahood even if you practice lifetime after lifetime for countless eons. Attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime is then impossible. Therefore, when you chant the mystic law and recite the Lotus Sutra, you must summon up deep conviction that Myoho Renge Kyo is your life itself. Okay, when I read those words and I recite the Apostles' Creed, it makes me feel very lonely because I feel very alone on this planet because I feel and I know that I have an inflated ego. I realize that. I was told by my mentor when I first started practicing that your ego is beyond belief. Now I'm going to try to use that ego for people's benefits. Okay. I've read a lot of Sherlock Holmes. I've read every single story and novelette or novella from Arthur Conan Doyle at least four or five times. All of them. I love Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes had an older brother named Mycroft. Mycroft was smarter than Sherlock by Sherlock's own admission. But Mycroft was very lazy and didn't want to get up out of his chair most of the time. So, what was Mycroft's job for such an intelligent person? He was a bureaucrat. He was a bureaucrat that oversaw all the other bureaucrats, or at least analyzed. 
Each agency and cabinet in England at that time had certain specialities and they had plans and they had strategies and they had whatever developments they wanted to put forward. Only Mycroft could pull up all the pieces, take all the strings and ends and put it all together and come up with the proper course, proper procedure because he knew about all the agencies. He knew about economics, he knew about crop yields, he knew about foreign policy. So anything that came up, all the information went to him and he came back with an answer. This is what you should do and here's why. And I'm Mycroft because I'm one of the few people that can put all the pieces together and it's going to take more than 15 minutes to explain it to you so I'm just going to give you an overview and uh, I'm going to do something a bit more comprehensive after Easter um, but I did want to say those passages out of homage to JC and I will go more deeply into analyzing the Apostles Creed later because it is Buddhism it's just a provisional teaching. I'm sorry, I don't want to step on toes, but I've studied Christianity in depth, and I've studied Buddhism in depth, and I realized that they're saying the same thing, they're just coming from different angles. I'll get into that later. I don't want to tell people that I've moved on when people talk about being a Christian. I've never recanted my gratitude toward Jesus Christ for what he did, but I can't blindly accept that that covers me just by believing that he did that, I'm absolved from blame. The only people that are absolved from blame are victims and oppressive and people who are oppressed. They are the Immaculate Conception because they're victims and they're members of a oppressed group so they cannot commit a crime so even if they might do something wrong like kill someone or rob someone at gunpoint that will not go into the statistics of criminal behavior because they won't be arrested because they're victims and if worse comes to worse they'll be killed too because we can't have any oppressed people being victims or being incarcerated or being held to account now the more I look at all the news the more I have to hearken back to my earlier diatribes Timon of Athens I did that is a Shakespearean play about a guy who was a glad-hander who helped all his friends and then when he needed help they all turned their back on him. Now how is that happening in this world? Well we see it. America's always given aid, humanitarian aid and money to third world countries and they've come to the aid when there's an earthquake they come to the aid when there's some sort of a problem um, and now we're coming to the aid of a country that's fighting valiantly against a superpower and we're exhausting all our resources over that now that America uh, what used to be America is kind of falling on hard times I don't see those self same people coming to our aid I see the gargoyle going to Uganda and they're all dancing and having a big celebration as she's walking down the tarmac, the red carpet. I don't know if you saw it, it's sickening. Why are they dancing? Because they're so happy to see the gargoyle? No. They're happy because it's like, if this person's coming to see us, we're going to get something out of her. We're going to get some aid. And all us top people are going to share it amongst themselves. And then we're going to throw a few dry bones to the people and all's well with the world. That's Timon of Athens. I talked about the unnamed enemy 
which nobody can ever talk about but me. I'm the only one because I have no sponsors. My sponsor is the Mystic Law. And it doesn't send paychecks in the mail. Your reward comes in different ways. But the unnamed enemy was Madison Avenue. Nobody can say that on Fox or Wyon or Rising or any of these other outlets. They cannot start blaming Madison Avenue for anything because that's their bread and butter. Bread and butter is what it's all about. And that's another reason why some of these former friends of ours are turning on us because they're going to see where their bread is buttered. And they're looking at China and they're looking at what used to be the United States and they're going, China is going to be our future. It's obvious. But Madison Avenue, okay. Darren Stevens, we need more people to buy our Bud Light beer. Let's try to appeal to a wider crowd. Okay, well this, uh, Dylan Mulvaney's really hot on the internet, real big, real big, so let's get they to uh, be a sponsor because that'll just bring in all kinds of people. New people, to people that never drank Bud Light, but now they'll start doing it out of support. Because we're inclusive. That's brilliant. Oh my God, get on it right away. Call they up. And uh, let's get some commercials right out the door. Okay. It didn't work out well, did it? And the reason it didn't work out well was because you can't force people to change. They have to come to their own realizations over a period of time and evolve. And by pushing it, all you did was create the very hatred that the wokesters and the idiotsters and everybody else have been complaining about all the hatred. It just is a perpetual snowball. It gets bigger and bigger. Bud Light has Mulvaney as a spokesperson. Everyone who drinks Bud Light starts shooting their cans and throwing cases of Bud Light into the ocean. It didn't work out well. Now what are they going to do? Say we're sorry we did that? Well then they're perpetuating the hatred that they were trying to avert. Okay. Jack Daniels now wants to get on board. I guess they did not learn the lesson of the plummeting stock of Bud Light and Hauser Bush. So there's some rhyme to the reason and I have a feeling it has nothing to do with business. It has to do with influences on this planet that are coming to bear. And I see the big picture. I see that China gave us TikTok in order to drive home the point that people that used to be Americans are stupid idiots. They didn't take the time to learn. School was a drag. All started in the 70s. I already told you all this. Stupidity was be has become, you know, had become the norm, the thing you want to strive for. If you look too smart, you're a geek, you're a nerd. Well, look at the geeks and nerds now. They're the ones pulling our strings. All right. So, Madison Avenue, and then here's the last final little snippet. The influencers are distracted along with everybody else. Every single influencer I see is stuck on the same old long playing record with a scratch in it. Matt Walsh. The only subject to be concerned with right now is transgender ideology. I will only talk about that for the rest of my life. Russell Brand. The only issue there is right now is the vaccine and COVID. I will talk about that for the rest of my life. Only me, Mycroft, will pull all of it together. COVID, vaccines, transgender ideology, wokesterism, utter impunicity and hypocrisy, 
other dual universes, one insurrection, they lock them up with no habeas corpse. The other insurrection, they're lauded as heroes. So obvious. So these influencers better get on the stick because I'm going to pass you by and only two or three people on this planet are going to know it. And I will leave it there. I have too much to say so I'm going to do something a little different in the near future. A special edition. And I'm going to tie everything together for everybody and explain the meaning of life and why we're in this predicament and all the things that have contributed to our demolition. But uh, I'll leave it there and have a happy Easter. I'm going to be busy all day tomorrow. All right. Have a good day.